Hello, this is Gene Harm bringing you a new program I just recently down, uh, downloaded, uh, Sail Away. And I had some difficulty getting going with it. It's a little clunky. But I want you to notice right dead center screen, you can click on the icon there and the anchor icon. And by clicking on it, it'll bring the sails up and also bring them down, depending on which way you want to go. I would like you to, if yours are up, go ahead and click on it and bring them down. And we will get started in our quick start guide here. First thing is go into the main menu and select your boat. It is, I'm recommending that you start out with the Nordic uh, folk boat. So you can see there are many boats to choose from. Uh, there had been some criticism, there's not enough, but I, I there's quite a few to start with. But start out with the Nordic folk boat. And you can edit it and give it, it your own name if you want, but the, that's something you can do later. And here we are, and we have the boat ready to go. Uh, but the questions are, where are we? And first I want you to look at this HUD that's up. It looks, there's uh, like two dials, and you can grab it with your mouse if you grab that yellow bar up top. And just click that and drag it around. And the other thing you can do, of course, would be to stretch it. By clicking on the bottom left corner, it will highlight a, a little yellow corner, and you can stretch it back and forth. I didn't know that for a while. Click on these tabs. The map, the map tab uh, kind of shows you where you are. Now, right now, I have myself located off of Cape Canaveral. Uh, that's quite near where I live, so that's where I place my boat. Now, what you can do is, uh, well, let's ask the big questions. How do I... How do I place my boat and in the spot of the world I want? So if you scroll in and out, you notice that you can scroll uh, into a global view and get further and further out, or you can scroll in uh, using the middle mouse scroll. But go ahead, and if uh, what we're doing here is we're going over to Hawaii. And so let's say I want to place my boat in Hawaii. I will then uh, choose a spot. By scrolling back down to the exact location where I want to place it. So once I find that place, I just take my mouse. And we're zooming in on Pearl Harbor here. And you'll see there's a lot of... Um, A lot of well, there's some landmarks there, and there's also some marker buoys and that kind of thing, going in and out of the uh, the, the the waterways. You'll find these buoys. Now, when you click on a particular location, notice in the bottom left corner, an airplane icon comes up, and and you click on that airplane icon, and it'll put you right there in Hawaii where you had clicked on the screen. Once again. Again, if you need to repeat the video, look at that. Take your mouse, point to the location you want. When you click on it, then go to the bottom left corner where the airplane icon turned up, and you'll see it. Now, the next tab is the GPS. The GPS tab tells you what time of day it is, and that's the UTC time, but you also get local time over on the right side. So that's nice there that we have the GPS uh, tab. It's quite handy, uh, but it does not account for daylight savings time, so uh, it is local time. Now, it turned out that it is reality. At whatever time of day it is, anywhere on the planet, that's the time of day it is in Sail Away. So, uh, you notice it's now turned to day. I didn't do any shenanigans with the program. I actually left the program for a couple hours and came back during daylight hours. I did not set, as far as I know, there's no way to set the time. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but I have not found any way to change time. You're always in reality. You're always in the time of day it is on planet Earth, and it's not changeable. Also, as far as I know, you are always in whatever weather we have in reality. I could be wrong about that too, but you have no settings for weather. You, it, it, it automatically looks up online to do so. Now, if you press the C key, the HUD for the compass comes up. And event, if you want to turn it off, you press the C again. 
What I do not know how to do is I do not know how to turn the HUD off, uh, the main HUD that has the two boats in it. The left boat is your heading and your right boat is the wind direction. So on the main HUD, I want you to look at the dial on the heading HUD, which is the left, the left side of the, uh, of that. That gives you exact heading and that dial rotates around that, that fixed boat. Uh, and you notice sometimes the, that line coming out of the front of the boat shows you the exact heading, uh, including the, the, um, uh, the direction of the boat over ground. So that's the course over ground, the COG course over ground. Now on the right side of the HUD, you have a fixed compass. So that dial never rotates it's basically showing what rotates is the wind direction you'll see that the point of seal or the wind direction will go around the right dial uh, once we get to sailing the boat so understanding this hud is is vital uh to uh, to uh, knowing what you're doing with the sailboat um, there is ways to uh Minimize it and then if you click on the little right arrow on top, it'll gray it out, uh, but you still see it. I do not know any special key. Uh, maybe there is one that completely turns it off. The C key just turned off the compass rose that was uh, the bigger HUD. You can hover your mouse over. I'm, I'm sorry that my program didn't uh, doesn't hides my mouse so you can't see it. It would be a little easier for me to discuss what I'm doing if you could see the mouse. But if you take the mouse and hover it over any of these acronyms, the TWS, you know, it tell you it tells you exactly what they mean and what they are. That's the true wind speed, and, and so you see the true wind speed and the apparent wind speed over to the right. So true wind speed, you know, here in Hawaii right now, it's it's early morning, I believe, and there's like no wind. <laughs> you can't. We're not able to sail without any wind. So normally. And winds from like, you know, very light breeze to, to five knots is so light that you, it's not good sailing in that. And here we don't even have a knot of wind going on, just barely, barely anything. So we're probably going to have to move uh, to another location to get our uh, tutorial going for a quick sail. But notice that there's lines here. Those wires, the, those three stationary cables going up the mast that's what we call stand um, fixed rigging so uh, that fixed rigging uh, that once you have the mast up it holds it up there's the uh, side stays and the forward stay and then this is the that's the forward stay up front and then of course the back stay goes to the back and actually the back stays adjust adjustable now the ropes the ropes you see coming down the mast that's your running rigging that's what runs up the sails, the jib, and, and, uh, and they're adjustable while you sail. So uh, pretty much the fixed rigging uh, needs to be tuned in correctly before you get going. Uh, and if you do need to bend the mast back and forward on this boat, you actually can adjust the, the, uh, the, um, back, the back stay a little bit. So the two cables to, to the sides are the uh, side stays, the forward stay, and the, the back stay. Now, the front of the boat, we call the bow. Uh, and in seaman's terms, that's the forward. And the rear of the boat, we call the stern. And in seaman's to, uh, term, uh, the aft. Now, this particular rope is your running rigging or your main sheet and then this one that's uh that's you to bring up your foresail or your jib or um your spinnaker so in this case we have a jib for the front sail and the main sail is on the boom so the jib halyard now the main running rigging that raises raises the jib up is the halyard and the main halyard raises the main sail I find that in sail away it's quite quirky. You can do it with the mouse. You point your mouse at highlights and then you move your mouse sideways and it starts to yank the sail up. But then if you try to look around, it, it detaches and does something different. So the easiest thing to do is use the keyboard commands for raising the halyard. 
Now uh, the S command will raise the halyard, the W will release it. So whether you're working with the main halyard for the main sill or the jib halyard, either way, you're going to use the W to take the sail down and you're going to use the S to raise the sail. So let's go ahead and raise up these sails. I'm going to just raise the main halyard right now to 110%. So as we get that all the way up, and we got a full sail at 110%, and it, you can see it's luffing. So as it flops back and forth in the wind, because we always want to raise our sails while the bow is pointing straight into the wind. So we don't have it take the boat taken off and moving on us before we want to. And then we can climb back into the cockpit, sit down, and see as the sail is luffing as it is, uh, begin to direct the boat in one direction and another. Now the keyboard command, I find that you can look at the... the uh, the controls uh, and point your mouse and move it around like that as I was saying I can look at the tiller and move it with my mouse see that that's that's a rudder and the tiller is the wooden beam that comes out of less control but I find using the keyboard commands a lot easier so use the A and the D to turn the boat so A to, towards the left and D towards the right now the right side of the boat we refer to as the starboard and the left side of the boat we refer to as the port side. So let's go ahead and pull the uh, tiller towards us um, either with the uh, or push away. Which the, so go ahead and do that with the A and D is what I'm going to be showing you now. Using the Q and the E key rotate through until you find the main sheet. Now I found the main sheet and when I use the keyboard can, uh, command W and S like I did for pulling up the sails, uh, we can also, we're always pulling the ropes or the sheets with the W and, and S, the S command to pull it and the W command to release it. So I just released the main sheet all the way back to 15% with the W command to help me catch the wind. And then I turned the boat a little bit to the left or to the port. So you can see on the right side of the HUD, uh, where our wind direction, we have a, the uh, true, the apparent wind and the true wind. And now I point it back into the wind again. So that's the right side of the dial on the right side of the HUD. And now clicking open the map. I'm going to go ahead and relocate because there's not enough wind here to actually demonstrate much of anything in sailing. So let's move out of Hawaii uh, by opening up the map and let's take it on over and begin our sailing. Uh, once again, uh, we're going to do the manual. Now we could have went up to the center top and hit the anchor button, pull these things down, but for the sake of uh, knowing what we're doing, Remember, we can rotate into the to the main um, uh, the main sheet, but we're going to rotate into the main halyard and use the W key to release it. Now, to go on to how to sail the boat into the next video, let's move on to uh, another location where we can get some wind and I'll show you how to sail. Uh, I wanted to mention that. Uh, I went into settings and go into settings and options and, and change it to expert mode. Strangely enough, uh, you need to do that. So here we are, we've made our way to a new location using the map and then selecting my different voyages I selected the Florida Keys and said yes to override my previous place in Hawaii and hit the transport um, uh, well the teleport the teleport icon and you notice automatically that uh, we're in the Keys now and the 
true wind speed is 11 knots 11.6 knots that's wonderful we can do some some nice sailing here now with the with some good wind so um yeah i found that if i uh when i was trying to sail this boat underneath the other modes yeah don't forget you can use the anchor key to to up bring the sails up or to take them down uh but be fair what's Put them down let's do these things manually so we all learn how to use the running rigging and so we'll rotate through find the main halyard and if and as a refresh we're using the s key to run the mainsail up yeah a lot of these functions weren't available i mean i couldn't run the rigging the way i thought i could with the auto sail and the other uh, modes so expert mode gives you uh, ability to uh, do all the functions that you would normally do on a boat and of course that's what we want so now we got the main sail completely up at 110 percent and but the reason why uh, they probably do that is there's so much running rigging on many of the other boats see we're luffing again so because we're pointing directly in the wind, which you always want to do when uh, you yank your, your sail up. But uh, we're going to grab the main sheet. And the main sheet, of course, now is going to pull the boom and the main sail tight uh, to the center. And the W command lets it fly out loose. <clears throat> So we want the ability to do all these different uh, sheets and, and uh, so that's why we put it in expert mode. But also the reason why we choose the folk boat is because it doesn't have all the sheets and rigs and everything that some of the more complicated boats have. And I can understand why you would choose some of the automated modes if you wanted to use those other boats. But what's learned with this boat and... Uh, where we were able to learn how to do things with the rigging we have and it's pretty simple uh, most of the time we're using the main sheet and the, for the mainsail and the sheet for the jib so here we go we're uh, we're off and away now uh, we're moving and that's the beauty of uh, just turning a little bit in the wind and we catch it with the sail and the thrill of going is at hand so we're only going uh, you know a half a knot or so so we want to pick up some speed so we you notice that on the right dial uh, I need to rotate the boat a little to the port in order to catch good wind normally about 30 degrees off of the front of the bow Oh, that is the wind coming about 30 degrees off the front of the bow is where we can do a close haul. And any closer into heading into the wind will, would, uh, would, would stop the boat. So that's about as tight as we can get. We can hit the trim command. Uh, the trim tab, as you see, I did this. And it gives us some hints at how we can adjust for the best uh, ability to catch wind. So besides the main sheet, we can also use the advice here and move the traveler. The traveler, you see, moves the center point of the main sheet back and forth uh, to give us uh, additional trim and to get the best, most efficient wind without wasting wind along the sail. Now you see the, the blue uh, telltales flapping in the wind when they're flapping horizontal like that we we got it good we got it trimmed up good and we can scroll through the different views the bottom right of the screen is these little uh, icon there one looks like a like a steering wheel and then the other one looks like a bunch of eyeballs and you keep clicking on that and you can go through all the different views on the on your boat for sail away when you want to go back into the con uh, cockpit you just press on the steering wheel icon and it'll take you and pop you right back into the cockpit 
Now the wind coming across the bow, uh, we call that the windward side, and as it goes across the, in this case, the right side, the starboard side, is the windward side, and then on the left side, the, the port side, is the leeward side. So we're moving along, and we're going to yank up 110% on the jib halyard. And boy, we we doubled our speed. We went up from two knots, and we're going right up to four and a half, five knot, almost five knots now, just by yanking up the uh, the jib halyard. Now the main sail, uh, these sails are 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 made to work like an airplane wing. Uh, they actually give lift as the wind goes across the sail and it shapes the sail like a wing and, and believe it or not the wind going around the leeward side of the sail is going to have to run faster than the wind hitting the sail this is different than the old wooden ships that had square sails all they could do is run with the wind as it blew against it but these uh, modern boats um, have these sails that uh, are shaped like wing, wings. In fact, some of the race boats, uh, you can really see how much they shape them look uh, like airplane wings. Um, but, yeah, we trim it up. We find that the best trim here is 45% on the main sheet. Uh, and then if we luff it out again, the telltales go back and forth. So you can keep playing with this until you get those telltales uh, flying across the sail horizontally just the way you want so uh, we're, we're way too tight on the main sheet so if you uh, and there we go I mean make a little bit loose and then we tighten it up a little more and we get perfect uh, uh, wind for the sail and you're going to do this for the jib as well so we loosen up the main sheet again and you see going back and forth so this is great if uh, you just want to run the boat in any old direction, which seems to be the best for the wind. But what if you want to change direction? So we're going to talk about that as we get to the point where we want to turn around and change our direction and how we adjust. But one of the things that the jib does, you, know, you can pop your view up here and see the jib is not as efficient as we like. And so we're going to adjust that by rotating through using the Q and E keys to rotate till we get the jib sheet. So the jib sheet, uh, got to go back again, jib, jib sheet. Is at 100%, so we want to loosen that up with the W key, and then we got those flying perfectly. So that's great. We got the jib now, the most efficient. One of the beauties of the jib is it catches a lot of wind. It's amazing how much, but it also helps blow wind across the mainsail really fast, giving the boat a lot of lift. So um, not only that the boat is being pushed through the water by the wind, but even more so. Uh, lift uh, drives the boat uh, to its whole speed and the whole speed of a boat is one of the things I was hoping that we'd have more information if we went to the info tab uh, on the HUD but we don't get that so uh, I'm now adjusting the main sheet again to give us the best efficiency see the telltales are gone I'm down. I'm going a little back and forth to so really get an idea of how to do this. There we go. Now we got the uh, the telltales flying. Sometimes you have to go back and forth between the jib and the main sheet, and then uh, it's always a constant thing because wind doesn't always stay stable either. So you may have a gust of wind changes things up, but for the most part, we got a good, a good wind today, a good stiff wind. Yeah, oh, that's right. 
I was talking about hull speed. Yeah, let's turn the boat around and we'll get back to hull speed in a minute. Now you notice that the wind is catching us from the over the stern from the back side as we're turning the boat the boom comes slamming from one side to the other I know I'm kind of annoyingly going back and forth but I want you to see uh, how dangerous this is it's called a jibe and so there's a there's nothing wrong with doing a jibe uh, mo most of the time you want to you want the wind going across the bow and not across the stern but there are occasions when you have to turn uh, going across the stern and the proper way to do a jibe is to pull the main sheet tight there we go and then we only then the boom only has to flop uh, a couple feet instead of coming flying from way over one side to the other either way whether you're going across the, the bow with the wind which is attack or going across the stern with the wind which is a jibe the boom will have to come flying around and you'll have to duck for safety on a normal boat of course but uh, uh, you got the benefit of this not having to worry about that but just to know the correct way to do a jibe is to tighten the main sheet so you got the boom close to center then you do the jibe and then you make your, your uh, uh, then you can do your corrections uh, on the sail for the most efficient so now we want to turn the boat in any any direction um, that's necessary uh, you know we can just come out here and have a joy sail like we are kind of today but if I want to go back towards the land or a particular point in in, in, uh, in the sea a particular heading I will need to uh, get the boat to uh, to that heading as long as it's not directly into the wind I can I can go to that heading and adjust the sails accordingly we have the wind coming across the right straight across the beam we call that a beam reach and then we go over the stern that's a the boat is when the winds coming over the back of the boat we call that running so we're running with the wind and then as we do a broad run or a broad reach when the winds coming across not directly from the stern but between the beam and the stern we have a broad reach so right now we have a broad reach and we're looking at the right side of the hud to show where the wind direction is so we have our adjustments on uh, the broad reach to give us the best wind without wasting wind so much going on um, I'd like to get back to whole speed <laughs> so every boat has a whole speed so as you as the whole of the boat is going through the water it creates a wave off the bow in fact it creates many waves along the side of the boat and as you get faster and faster the wave becomes bigger and the less the number of waves that are created until you get one single wave from the bow to the stern uh, press the trough and and then you cannot at that point go any quicker and that's the limitation of the boat that's the whole speed well, why do motor boats go so fast well because they don't keep the hole in the water they hydroplane up out on the crest of the waves and that's how they break they break out a whole speed into a hydroplane and go across the top of waves um, in a lot of ways sailboats are a lot more gentle and easier and relaxing because they're not pounding the surf uh, like a motorboat would so we continue our broad reach here um, with the wind coming across the not quite the stern but the the aft side of the boat we're going to tighten it up and then do our jibe see how we tightened up the boom with the main sheet at 100 percent did our jibe and then we we turn the boat in this point of sail with the wind coming directly across the, the side of the port side is a beam reach 
So now we're running a beam reach. So there are uh, a number of points of sale. Uh, of course, now we've run the uh, broad reach and now the beam reach. And then if we get... We look at the map. I want to look at the map and you see there's a green beacon out a few, few about a kilometer or so. Uh, well, not even quite a kilometer. So you see this uh, on the right bottom of the map. It tells you how far uh, what the key is there. It looks like it's about a little bit more than half a kilometer away. There's this green beacon. So let's see if we, we don't see it actually right now. It's probably behind the jib where I can't visually see it. So let's head for that particular point and that's how we're going to determine uh, where we're heading is point the boat to a particular object and head towards it and then adjust our sails accordingly so we're rotating with the E and Q key uh, through the different running rigging and find the main sheet and adjust it until our telltales are correct and there we are, about 49% of telltales uh, actually run. Now the telltale, sometimes you can see the telltale on the opposite side of the sail. It's a little, it's a little faded away. But if you see that the telltales are horizontal and blown correctly on the, on the windward side, but on the leeward side they're still flopping, that's when you want to adjust the traveler. See, uh, loosen up the main sheet. Go back and forth a little bit so you can see. You can see both telltales, the, the one on the on our side and the one on the opposite side of the sail. And when you get them both to go fine, uh, adjusting the, the main sheet traveler along with the main sheet and get those telltales just right, you won't be wasting any wind. And then, of course, we do a little adjustment on the jig. And it's hard, to, yeah, we have to jump forward here to take a look at the telltales on the jig. A lot of times, if you're, if you're at like 49% on the main sheet, uh, then usually adjusting a jib about the same amount would give us the proper, proper uh, angle to catch the wind so uh, there is also uh, not a traveler but the the jib car the jib car adju also adjusts uh, the extra trim for the uh, for the jib sheet as well as the as, as well as the jib sheet I said so we'll pull that in We'll get that to about uh, 30 percent. Looks like we're oh, coming a little tighter than that. Should do it. Yeah, it looks like the wind changed a little bit on us. Okay. A little bit more adjustments. We we'll get our main sheet back up to. 29% everything all the top tells is good and we're not wasting any room. So nice sailing day. A good stiff breeze. I would say, you know, uh, below five knots of breeze, it's very light, not a good not good for sailing, but uh, frustrating. Frustrate sailors when you have such light breezes. Between five and ten knots, that's a pretty good wind. Uh, you can sail on that nicely. Um, between 10 and 15 that's a good stiff breeze and really enjoy sailing when you have a good stiff breeze 15 to 20 knots uh, we're not talking about a stiff breeze anymore we're talking about a pretty strong wind and any more than that you have to begin the reef reef is cutting your main sail down uh, percentage wise so you don't uh, uh, you don't tip your boat uh, so much over that uh, you're losing. You're putting stress on the boat and putting stress on the sail and 
ripping sails or take a mast out. And that's what happens in storms where you get over 30 knots, but uh, we can reef between 20 and 30 knots and begin thinking about reefing. But don't forget, if you have trouble and you need some advice, go to the trim tab and see what it tells you. And uh, a lot can be learned there. It's one of the most useful tabs going to the trim tab. So looking at the map, we're, we're heading towards the Green Beacon, but it's a little bit off to the starboard side and probably hidden behind our sails. So we need to turn our boat a little bit to head to, to the direction uh, so we can see ahead of us. So, um, I don't know the whole speed for the folk boat, but I've gotten it up to five and a half, I think even more. Uh, usually on small boats, about 20 foot and nine. Oh, there it is. If you look straight ahead over the, over the bow, you see uh, what looks like a stick coming up out of the water. That's our, that's our beacon. So now we know we can head, we can head to that and keep our boat pointed to that and, and, and keep ourselves going straight. And now that we have our heading, uh, we can then correctly adjust the sheets uh, to not waste wind and give us the most efficient, uh, efficient uh, sail and point us uh, in our telltales for this particular heading. Yeah, uh, usually uh, small boats around uh, 20 feet or 20, 20 to 25 feet have hull speeds between around 6 knots. Um, smaller boats, are gonna, the smaller the boat, the smaller the hull speed. So um, that's typical. You need bigger boats for uh, what will get you a little bit more speed. Like I said, I don't think I've, I've only had this program for a week or so and I've been sailing this folk boat and five and a half is about as much as I've gotten out of it so far. Um, I've also sailed the Caribbean Rose and the, um, uh, a couple of the other bigger boats and they for sure go a lot faster. So if you want to do some island hopping like in the Bahamas or the uh, Hawaii or wherever you are with these islands, uh, you may you want to get probably a larger boat that has a better hold speed. But the folk boat is a wonderful boat. Uh, I love wooden boats and it's just a beautiful boat. Uh, it has the basic uh, rigging that is simple to learn and uh, to me the, the boat to start with without having to deal with a whole bunch of different lines so so far sail away has been very enjoyable I, I gotta admit the you know, like I said, I've only had it for a week now, and I wanted to put together this kind of quick start and tutorial in a sense. Because the first hour and a half or so, I was so frustrated with it that um, I was reading some of the criticisms even before I, I got into it. And ignored the criticism and went ahead and, bu and bought it and downloaded it and started using it anyway. Uh, but after about an hour and a half, I understood the criticisms. It was... Uh, it was so difficult. I mean, I didn't understand the, the interface. I was uh, really I had it on auto sail or beginner mode. I couldn't figure out why one, or none of the lines would work. And so once I put it on expert mode and got the got acquainted with the user interface. Now I'm still having difficulties understanding uh, on refreshing my voyages and. and if you want to have 
boats at different locations I figured out you have to add additional boats so add more boats and, and set them in different voyages uh, but I hadn't quite figured all the interface stuff out yet you know because every time you get into it it brings up your last seal um, location but if you want to change to a place like most of the time I sail at night I'm yeah and so I don't mean I sail at night I I can get on my computer for relaxation at night and I don't want to sail at night so I have to go to a part of the world that's opposite of where I live in order to sail during the daytime so some of those things are still kind of frustrating hadn't quite figured out yet and um, here I'm, I'm pulling down my jib I'm getting close to the um, the beacon and one of the main questions that new beginners uh, well I should say beginners to sailing have is how do I stop the boat <laughs> and oftentimes uh, a beginner will, will just run a boat right into a dock or into the into the beach or whatever or right into other boats but the way to of course the way to stop is to reverse the stuff you, you, you pull down your your jib for sure and you're going to take it from five knots right on down to two and you're going to slow your boat down but at some point um, the other way is you can waste wind so you see what I'm doing here is I'm releasing the main sheet and, and wasting the wind and so that'll slow the boat down but eventually when you get to the point you want you swing your boat and point the bow into the wind and that puts you at a stop And then of course once you're whoops uh, and then of course once you're stopped you just be bobbing up and down and you're good so so here now uh, if this is where you want to end up you take your main halyard down and throw out your anchor and you're done Hopefully you enjoyed all that and it's been helpful and uh, thanks for watching.